Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Joy Taylor. On today's show, should we be surprised that LeBron James picked Kyrie Irving in the All-Star Game draft? Plus, Hall of Famer Rod Woodson weighs in on Tom Brady's plan to play well into his 40s. And should the Cowboys be building their offense around Zach Prescott? Skip, Shannon, let's get to it. The rosters for LeBron and Steph's all-star teams were revealed yesterday. LeBron had the number one overall pick, but the draft was held in secret, so we do not know the order of the picks. Here are the starting lineups. LeBron's team has Durant, Anthony Davis, Boogie Cousins, and his old friend Kyrie. Steph's lineup has the Greek freak James Harden, DeMar DeRozan, and Joel Embiid. Let's take a listen to KD, Steph, and LeBron on the draft. So tell me, uh, LeBron, you had the first pick. Who'd you take? No, I can't tell you that. Oh, man. come on. I mean, so, but, yeah, <laughs> he I, tried I, to get I can't you. tell you that, man. No, no, but, no, but LeBron. I can't tell you, you that, man. But I might you, have to kill you if I tell you that. I'll take that. What is it about your team that you like the most? And, and how did it, uh, how did the Kyrie situation present itself for you? I mean, it, you know, I just try to pick the best available players, you know, and, uh, you know, to be able to tame up back with, with, with Kyrie. Um, you know, it's always special, you know, and, and, and along with Kevin Love, just, you know, for us to have another weekend to bring back some of the memories that we had when we were all together. So, you know, Kyrie was available on the draft board. Uh, he's one of the best point guards that we have in our league. So, um, you know, uh, it was an easy choice for me. Well, finally, somebody picked me number one. Uh, that feels pretty good. It's going to be fun competing against Steph Clay and Draymond. I'm sure it's going to be a lot of trash talk throughout the weekend. So I'm looking forward to it. It should be fun. Katie said on Instagram, Steph, I'm coming for you. Are you shaking in your boots? I ain't worried about him. I ain't worried about him at all. I ain't worried about him at all. I ain't worried. <laughs> I ain't worried about him at all. So sweet. That would be so friends. <laughs> Shannon, were you surprised by the picks? No, because I told you what was going to happen, Skip Bayless. And I said, you can book it that it's going to happen. LeBron was in the cap, Skip. Mm -hmm. There was no way. LeBron could go wrong because you knew he was going to take KD number one. He, he, that's the only guy currently playing in the NBA that LeBron feels is on his level. So I'm trying to win this game. Skip, if you're trying to win the game, the NBA wants the players because they don't want 380 points again. They don't want what they saw last year or the last couple of years. So if you want the game to be taken serious, you take the draft serious. And that's what LeBron did. He got, oh, he got all them Ds. He got KD, AD, Kyrie. <laughs> oh, Skip, Wait, we got, is there a D? In no, I, I just said we got the AD. We got KD and AD uh, first. Oh, okay. Steph Curry must have bumped his head. I don't know what he was thinking with his drafts. Really? Man. Oh. Interesting. You, Kevin Durant, we got a seven foot two guard. Hmm. Who gonna guard him? Hmm. We got a six eleven center, a six ten four, a six eight and a half three, hmm. and we got the guy that have the best handles in the NBA running the point. Hmm. So I don't. All I want to know is who's guarding KD and who's guarding LeBron. Hmm. James Harden. Hmm. Who got KD? Ball up. Hmm. LeBron's gonna win. The, the, I mean, the the point you're missing is. Who's got anybody? Who guards anybody? I, I think, Does anybody got anybody no, in the whole game? Skip, I, Seriously. I think Kyrie is putting his line up because he got a bunch of shooters now. Mm. So I get, I bet you, the over on the prop bet, what you think? 63s for the West. Getting up 63s. Because you're not going to get no rebounds. Mm. You ain't get no boards. This is what the West lineup looked like last year. Because remember, Skip, when they had KD, they had Anthony Davis, they had Boogie Cousins, mm. and all the, all the East had was LeBron and Giannis. Mm. So they go deep. We got this. And LeBron is trying to tell you, look here, guys, I know. Look, we, it was a painful breakup between Kyrie and myself, but I'm going to put all that aside. <laughs> I'm about this business. I'm about winning. And for the win, I'll do anything. Mm. So you're admitting, LaShannon Sharp, today that Kyrie is that bad man, right? You, you've been dissing him all year. I, now he's your friend no, again, Le right? LeBron James says when, when you need to win, you need Kyrie. No, LeBron said the way the draft board set up and the way it played out, mm -hmm. Kyrie was available. All of these guys are all-stars. Mm. But if Kyrie was there, what were we supposed to do? Bypass him? There are two players I knew absolutely for certain would be on LeBron James's team. That's Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook. I knew, now, you know, speculate, okay, if, if Steph went with Giannis or Joel Embiid, Braun would probably go AD. But I knew Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook would be on Le LeBron James' squad. They are. We're trying to win. Mm. So that's what you do. You link up, 
and you win. Hmm. We're going to beat the bricks. So LeBron is trying to win an all-star game when he doesn't really care that much anymore about winning championships, He's, right? Oh, Skip. I, I don't know. Skip. The man is – Interesting. Saw, he went to Miami. He linked up with two other players trying to win a championship. Mm -hmm. He goes back to Cleveland. He has Kyrie. They make the trade for Kevin Love. When has LeBron mm -hmm. been about anything other than winning? Mm -hmm. Stop it, Skip. Hmm. Stop hating. You mad because we got that monster. We got that banger out there and going to bust Steph Curry's head. Yeah, I care about the All-Star game. <laughs> you know, like two days after the All-Star game, you won't be able to remember who won it. Oh, yeah, you will. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Because you're going to keep reminding me? Because LeBron team is going to score 200. Really? Yep. Okay. You know, we might have a case of do bet on this game before it's over. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and you, I'm going to get the points. I remember. No, 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 yeah, no. Yeah, 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 Hold yeah, yeah. on. Hold on, Skip. What you mean you're going to get the points? On, the LeBron James is nobody. He's, I mean, he's over the hill. Did you just hear him tout a team that sounded like the NBA all-star equivalent of if, the 27 Yankees? It's the right? greatest starting five since the dream team of 92. Really? Yeah. You know, it is interesting, Joy, that – you know, player efficiency rating, which is the key stat in basketball, P-E-R. Yeah. Let's see. One, two, and three in P-E-R. Right here, right now in the NBA, they're, they're all on Steph's team. That would be Steph and James Harden and Greek Freak, right? It goes in the order of James is first, Freak second, Steph third. Mm -hmm. So the top three in P-E-R are on this, on Steph's team. What That's about interesting? The, so it's a mismatch, how huh? Many, how many MVPs on, huh? on, on LeBron squad? How many of the how many of the All Star MVPs for the last five is mm. on LeBron's team? How many All NBA selections on Wait, LeBron's Steph team? Steph has two, and James probably should have. I don't know what he should. Yeah, he should. He should yeah. shave that beard, but he still got it. So, and, and by the way, Clay Thompson <clears throat> leads the NBA in three point shooting at forty six percent. Every that's almost like half the time he rises to shoot. It's if, going if, in. If you don't mind me asking, interesting. Which guy on Steph Curry's squad? is going to be on Mount Rushmore when it's all said and done. Because I got a guy that's playing on Mount Rushmore right now, as we speak. Well, who, I mean, you mean KD? Don't do that, Skip. Well, I mean, don't right? do that, Skip. Why you do well, that? I don't know who you're talking about. You know who I'm talking about. The man that has four MVPs. The man who's minus 98 in the second half yeah. of the last 13 games because he's starting to look old? No, he's playing with a guy that's minus oh, 92. Oh, okay. I got it. So, not only is Clay the number one three-point shooter by far, but... Then, I don't know, Steph it just fell on his lap. But he's got Joel Embiid who, you know, remember that game against the Lakers when he had 46, 15, 7 assists and 7 blocks? Yeah. Remember that game? Do you remember that game? Do, last you know that on any given night, the most dominating player I see in the whole NBA, on any just single given night, is Joel Embiid. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought it was Anthony Davis. No, I'm just saying on the, on not when every once in a while when he decides to play because he doesn't always feel like playing, and obviously he doesn't play some back to backs. But I'm just saying, it, do we not? Did you not agree with me finally that Joel Embiid is a monster? Oh, he's a monster. Okay. But and wait a minute, Joel, what, help me out. The the last two times that NBA GMs were asked to vote on which player they would now start their franchise with, the mm -hmm. last two times, last two years. I think it was Carl Anthony Towns. Oh, is he on LeBron's team? No, he's on Steph's team. That's interesting. Yeah. So this is a mismatch, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, his first NBA, his oh. first his first All Star team. Huh, interesting. Mm, interesting. Okay. So now back to the the primary issues at hand. There are no issues. Yes, there are huge issues, and I'm about <laughs> to get into them. So as I said to you yesterday, you can just book it for all the wrong reasons that LeBron James will take Kevin Durant and he will manage to take Kyrie Irving. And this is so wrong. It's so LeBron. So right. It, it, it shows such weakness, softness, such unjordanness. That's what it shows. Unjordanness. Because here we go with, with Kevin Durant, who was the MVP of the NBA Finals. He's clearly LeBron a better LeBron, a younger, better LeBron. So why would you, try you to get, pick no, him? Stop it, Skip. You know, I'm not going to let you get away with that. Okay. Take it back. No, I'm not. He was the MVP so? of the 
of, of the finals. One time. He, he shot the shot of the finals right in LeBron's face. I thought the shot of the finals was Kyrie the year before. Well, or Ray Allen two years, three years before okay, that. That's true, but we're talking about last year. Okay. Obviously, the shot, as you agreed, was from Kevin Durant right in LeBron's face. Unbelievable. And even you said, LeBron, what are you doing? Yeah. Get up on him. But LeBron, but oh. hey, as Byron Scott said, and other guys said, when KD comes down like that, he normally steps inside and pulls up. I, I get it. LeBron so, was playing what he normally so again, was on tape. Because LeBron often compares himself to Michael Jordan. It's, it's often no, a competition. You do. No, he does. He chose to wear number 23 coming out of high school for one reason, and you know what that reason was. I'm coming for Michael oh. Jordan. So, you know what Michael Jordan would have done last night sitting in LeBron's catbird seat with what the first overall pick? He would have said, I don't need no Kevin Durant to go win no All-Star game. I'm going to go beat Kevin Durant and Curry. That's what he would have said. No, he wouldn't. Yes, he would have. You know it, and he I know it. He showed turned down Dennis Rodman. Oh, please. He, he had nothing to do with the picking of his team. That all came from Jerry Krause. Mm -hmm. and, and he had just a bunch of guys like a Scottie Pippen, who was not a top 50 Yes, player. he was. So... You need to stop the, the being out of Scotty, too. What, what is he saying to Kevin Durant? It's just so typical LeBron. If I can't beat him, I got to rejoin with him. I got to honor him. I, I got to show him how much I admire him. I've, I've got to, to hope that he'll take it a little easier on me if, in fact, I and my team can get back to another final. Is, is that where Kevin Durant, early in his career, would go to Ohio and work out with LeBron? That was vintage. Thank you for bringing, me, bringing that up because that was classic keep your friends close and your enemies closer because he took Kevin under his wing, and that's when Kevin was just a baby. All those Oklahoma City players were just oh, babies. Oh, they babies. Yeah, oh, Kevin, yeah. yeah. Well, they were. I love, I love how James Harden. I love why when someone is getting their head bashed in, mm -hmm. they're babies, a la well, Michael babies. Jordan by the big three Celtics they, they and the bad boy Pistons. They had no idea what was about to hit them from Dwayne Wade, and then remember the threes from Battier and Mike Miller, and remember oh, Chalmers so, game, the Mario uh, Chalmers so game. We, My God, are we, you remember that? Are we Gonna are we going to pretend 28-7-7 didn't happen mm -hmm. in the NBA Finals? Are we going to pretend? Are we really and, doing that? And skip? what did LeBron do that really changed the flow of that Finals? Remember, Oklahoma City won the first game. LeBron got a call in the second game that changed everything. But Last then they time went he back. got a call, too. Yeah, then that is true. I'll give you that one. But then they, they go back to Miami. And what was the strategic switch? LeBron finally, I kept pounding the table, he started to post up young, skinny Kevin Durant. Not that he isn't skinny now, but he's a lot stronger than he was in those days. And in those days, he idolized LeBron. He oh, looked up to goodness. him. He was a little brother because LeBron had taken him under wing and they had worked out together. They'd played flag football together. They'd done all kinds of things in the offseason. So LeBron psychologically had a hold on the You're kid. You're going to skip. No, I'm not. I know it. I, I said it then. I'll say it again now. And this was classic. I got to get him back into the fold. I got to get him back close to me because we got to be real close. We got to be bros because if we do match up in the finals again, I need him to take it a little easier on me. I don't need him to come with a vengeance to say that the torch is going to be passed again because that's what happened last year. Skip, when, when have you known teams, if you can select, and I'm trying to get the best players, well, Rick Hendricks should have never put uh, 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 Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, Earnhardt, Casey Kane. If you could have got Kyle Bush, he'd have took Kyle Bush also. That's what you're, you you're do. speaking Greek to me. I don't know well, what that means. Well, when you're trying to win, okay. you get the best available at whatever mm -hmm. that is. You get, if you, uh, 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 mm -hmm. say you're Johnson & Johnson or you're Abbott Corporation, yep. you get the best minds, the best scientists to try to come up with the products that you're going to push to the market. Unless, Where do you, unless, unless there's what? a psychological agenda between the lines operating here. I'm trying to win. Yeah, which brings me to Kyrie Irving. Let's do Michael Jordan again, sitting in the catbird seat. If he had a shot at, at a teammate who, and we're about to talk about this in our, our next block, but the report out of Cleveland.com is that Kyrie went so far as to issue an ultimatum to Dan Gilbert. I will not play another year with LeBron James, and if you try to force me to, I'm going to sit it out and have knee surgery. That's the guy. The bridge was so burned, he said, I can't take it anymore. I'm out. Okay. And LeBron James is trying to, again, this is PR because LeBron's about marketing, about image making, endorsements. And it, it looks like he's going to be, as you said yesterday, be the bigger man, yes. rise above yes. this. It's, it's, a, it's a great yes. PR move by LeBron. But Michael Jeffrey Jordan would have said, hell with him. That's what he would have said. Well, hell why, with why him. Why did Michael Jordan play on the dream team? 
We got all we got we got the best players in the world. Why are we gonna go beat up on lonely Angola, lonely Venezuela? Why would he do that? He all did. All star game Olympics. Oh, yeah, all all star game you know, is important. Same stakes. I, I do, think you know what? for your country. And oh oh, hold on hold on. Hmm. The all star game is not important now. So now Michael Jordan could do no wrong in your eyes, Skip. Mm -hmm. Stop trying. See you try to compare LeBron to Michael Jordan. No, he Stop. does. He does. And I'm sorry, I I got to do it now because that's what's going on because. He's, he's, again, sending the message to Kyrie, let's forgive and forget. Let, he didn't say that. Well, that's he said what, you Kyrie, know it is. One, Kyrie is one of the best players. If you're picking a team, Skip, you mm -hmm. try to pick the best. That's what you did when you selected me, number one. You <laughs> wanted the best. Mm -hmm. You could have had anybody. Actually, you said with the number one choice. I actually selected Joy first and you second, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. okay. Well, but you said with the number well, one pick. Well, I had the first two picks in my yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you know, you want to win. Mm -hmm. This is what mm. Joy, we here, right, Joy? <laughs> Even though you've been hating on me lately, Joy. <sighs> lately? Yeah. Lately. Yeah, y'all. Yeah. You uh, noticed uh, that too, huh? Yeah, yeah. I can't believe you, Joy Taylor. Don't but that's okay. don't, don't start. <laughs> me and Braun got this. I'm gonna be you going to the All-Star game? I got to be there. I got to see this. Okay. I got to yeah, see this. Okay. All right. So I'm going to finish on Kyrie. Again, message sent from LeBron is I, I need to defuse this a little bit. I got to reunite with him. I got to hug him a little bit and say, ah, we're, we're bygones be bygones because he doesn't want Kyrie to be too driven if, in fact, they do meet in the Eastern <laughs> Kyrie Conference. Kyrie going to be driven regardless because he knows what's at stake. Kyrie's been in these games before thanks to LeBron. But right now it's blood. That's a look. LeBron, LeBron is always going to be the bigger man. LeBron don't want to put them mitts on him, Skip. Mm -hmm. LeBron is like, okay, bro, look, you want it out? Okay, you're gone. Oh, but I ain't got no beef with you. I ain't got no bad love with he, you, bro. You know what? LeBron is a very nice guy. Yeah! Sometimes to a fault. No. Sometimes. And I told you, see, that's what you do. Mm. People take niceness for kindness, mm. for weakness. Mm. No, LeBron ain't weak. Mm. Oh, Brian will knuckle up if he have to. I mean, mm. but we ain't going to get nothing out of him lumping up Kyrie. 6'2 mm -hmm. Kyrie. Mm. You wanted him to, who you wanted to take? Bradley Beal with the, I mean, who you wanted to take number one overall? DeBron DeRozan? You, Anthony Davis. No. He got him anyway. He got him anyway. Because Steph shocked me, and Steph, I'm not defending some of Steph's picks, and I think he also was a little hamstrung because he did have the first pick of the reserves. It yeah. flipped around. Yeah. But you know what happened? He was backed into a teammate corner, well, right? You know, we, well, this is what we do know. Mm -hmm. He wasn't taking Russell, Westbrook. Why would he? And, and Steph Curry wasn't taking Kyrie Irving. No. So, I, would, I would agree. So, I mean, but you know who he was taking, number one of the reserves? I'm going to assume it was Draymond Green. I'm just going to assume that. I don't know that because, unfortunately, we don't know because, unfortunately, it was not televised. Should have been. It should have been televised. Why not? I mean, there are going to be some hurt feelings. Yeah. We saw Russell after his game. He got it in his head somehow because it was in alphabetical order that well, he, he was the last pick. He didn't, he didn't realize well, that at the time. W comes at the end of the alphabet, <laughs> but he was he thought, I was the last pick. But it worked for one night because I think Mello was really sticking it to him. Yeah. You know, like, like, yeah, they, they did pick you last, man. Braun took you last. Yeah, he took you last. Steph Curry didn't even want you. And, and Russell Westbrook went out and just took it out on poor John Wall and the Wizards with 46 <laughs> points worth. It was unfair. But, Skip, you need to stop this notion that if you're trying to win at something, you don't get the best if you think they can help you win. And by all stretches of the imagine, in any metrics, in any business, mm -hmm. you get the best. If, if, I'm, if I'm fighting for my life, are you gonna, I, mean, I ain't going to get that good lawyer. I'm going to go get this guy. I'm going to get that old jack leg guy. No, you get the best representation. Mm. LeBron James says, I'm trying to win the All-Star game. Adam Silver said, guys, you're not taking it serious enough. So this is what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. We're going to allow you the lead. The top vote getter will get to select. Mm. We'll, th we'll be the two captains. And wh whomever gets the most votes, they select first. Well, we already knew who that was going to be. Mm. They know who it's going to be. Yeah, the best player is the most popular player. There's That's hidden, not always the There's truth. hidden agenda. Ain't no Again, hidden. Yeah, there is. Ain't nothing hidden. I mean, you can to certainly win. justify taking Kevin Durant because he's better than you. But again, Michael Jordan would say, heck with you, I'll just beat you. I want you on Steph's yeah, team. Yeah, that's exactly what he told the big three Celtics. When you get old, we're going to beat you. That's exactly what he told the bad boy Pistons. When you get old, I'm going to beat you because they kept his head swole in the mm -hmm. early and the mid-80s. Mm -hmm. He couldn't do anything until Larry Bird back. He was carrying them pianos, had hurt his back.
Mm. Isaiah had gotten old. They had gotten rid of uh, 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 Rick mm. Mahorn. Lambert didn't want to do anything but box anyway. Mm. So that's when Michael Jordan started winning all these titles. Magic was old. Mm. Yeah, you know it. Mm. Beat Magic. Magic couldn't even finish the series. So, Byron Scott couldn't finish the series. So wait, are you saying Michael wasn't better than LeBron is? Is that what you're saying? When? Now. Nah, nah. Oh. Not in year 15. Huh? Not in year 15. How about overall? Who we, has, who's had the better career? We is still, that what you're trying to we, undercut? We still pour in cement. Oh. We still pour in cement. Michael Jordan's cement looked, dry. It, it kind of looks like your feet are stuck in no, cement. I right no, 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 right? no. Still. <clears throat> no. We, 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 we still averaging 27. Huh. Still averaging 8 and 8. Hmm. All I'm saying, we still pouring the cement. This ain't that you're, quick. You're still that, averaging like three losses a week is what you're averaging. It oh, you got like. That's okay. No, that's, that's what that's it feels like to me. But when it's all said and done, and mm. all the smoke clear, you know, don't go down to my dressing room. Mm. But it, with all, when it's all said and done and smoke clear, we know who that Phoenix, we know who rising up out them ashes. Don't mm -hmm. we skip Baylor's? Mm. Don't well, we skip. I, I'm going to give you this. You know which end to light? Yeah. Shh. <laughs> Joy. Man, you were happy. Sorry. Popo waiting on me I, I, every time I leave the Fox Lodge. Personally, uh, what's California? So you're good. I mm. personally, I think it's really nice that they're all no, friends again. No, you're good really if you ain't got sweet. that. That's what Snoop passed on. That's Gunyan. You ain't good with that now. No. Mm. No. That's mm. different. Skip, you be hating them, man. So I'm going to give you this. Bottom line. What's the bottom line? LeBron's team is a little better than Steph's team. I'll give you a little. Really? I don't think it's a, a lot. I think you're exaggerating and overreacting Can you to that. Look at all the first team all NBA players. P E R one two three Joel Embiid K A T. I, there's some firepower. I, 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 wait a minute, Clay Thompson, the best three point shooter in the league. I think I think it's going to be a nice. Well, I'm going to see. I'm going to see how I do guarding KD. Yeah. I'm going to see how I do guarding Anthony Davis and Boogie. Hmm. You know Boogie cousin. Oh, you keep talking. Oh, you see Joel Embiid. What about four? Anthony Davis back to back 45 and 15. He did. Boogie He's Cousins 44 20. I would have taken what, what about Braun? Mm -hmm. you, oh, you still, who has the most points scored in a single game this season, Skip? Hmm. Hmm. You know who. Well, maybe one day we'll get, we'll get the seven. hidden file of the actual draft. No mercy. It's a lot of speculation where LeBron will play next season, and this week has centered around Houston. NBA reporters Sam Amik of USA Today and David Aldridge of TNT both gave reasons why they think. LeBron will be a rocket, including his friendship with Chris Paul and Houston being a contender. We're joined by Chris Broussard. Welcome, Chris. Hey, Joy. Chris, could you see this happening? Mm. Yeah, I could see it happening. If I had to pick right now, I'd probably have Houston and, I mean, I think he's leaving Cleveland, but maybe Cleveland number two. So but you do think he's leaving? I'm not like 100%, okay. but yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning that way. Right. I'm over 50% that he's leaving. Here's the thing. Where else would you go? Like, if you still want to be competitive, like, unless you're just going to go and play as an individual and not try to win rings, San Antonio, I've always said, I think would be the best place mm -hmm. because of Greg Popovich and obviously Kawhi and mm -hmm. LaMarcus and some other players. If Kawhi going to be healthy and he still wants to play there. Well, that's the thing, because I think this summer the Spurs are going to offer Ka Kawhi an extension, a contract extension, max extension. He might not say yes. Yep. <laughs> and then... Who knows uh -oh. what happened? They could trade him. So that situation is in flux. Let's take them off the board. Okay. Paul George is looking more and more like he's staying in OKC. I think it's getting to the point where, unless there's some implosion where it's looks it's obvious this can't work, mm -hmm. locker room, on the court, whatever, he almost would look like a phony if he doesn't stay. With the things he's beginning to say mm -hmm. about how much he likes it there, Russ. It's a, almost an easy decision, all that stuff. So the Lakers, if George stays in OKC, why would you go to the Lakers by yourself? Philadelphia, you got the question of Joel Embiid, can he stay healthy? New York, they got enough maybe to win the East with him, but they couldn't beat Golden State. I think what LeBron should, so Houston makes all the sense in the world. But what if Houston wins it this year? Then I don't know where you need to just stay, I guess, in Cleveland. Um, <laughs> what LeBron should have done was last summer when he had the chance, when Paul George was like, I will sign on to stay at least one more next year in Cleveland, if LeBron will do it. LeBron should have done that. That would have give the, given him two years to try to win it in Cleveland with Paul George. And I think in 2019, the free agent landscape will be that much clearer. You know, uh, George, you'll, you'll know better what he's doing, I think. 
Uh, Embiid, you will have maybe seen him be healthy for two straight years. Yep. You'll know what the young kids in L.A. are really about. Lonzo, Ingram, Kuzma. So I just think this has turned out to be a summer that there may not be any great places for him to go. Mm. And uh, so, yeah, I think Houston, if they don't win it, is the front runner. If you think about it, the Rockets already already now the projected cap is 101 million. They've got 80 million committed. Chris Paul is a free agent. So is Clint Capella. Mm -hmm. So is Trevor Ariza. Now LeBron has already made it abundantly clear he's not playing for anything less than a max contract. Yep. LeBron's trying to buy an NBA franchise. The quickest way to do that is not by giving money back. You maximize your earning potential. Mm -hmm. I just don't see it. What Financially. If he, what if he goes to New Orleans? I mean, that would make sense. I just don't know. Just like I didn't see him going to San Antonio, I kind of, now New Orleans is obviously a great city, but I just see him more glamour, big, mm -hmm. huge market, unless it's at home in Cleveland. Yeah, uh, look here. What did Rich Paul say? Winning is what makes people like you and buy your mm -hmm. shoes, not where you play. Boogie, Braun, AD. Whew. We trouble. Trouble. They need some I, shooters. I know. We got a few. trouble for Golden State? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, hey, we get, you got a power. Hey, Boogie, we need, we need 20 a night rebounds. AD, we need you to get us 30 because we know Braun. You know Braun. Do Braun, Braun that. It's not a bad thought. I don't know if he'd do it, but it's not. It'd be interesting. Hmm. Get us one shooter. So, Chris Broussard, what chance do you give Houston of winning it all this year? 30%. I give it no percent. That's what really? I really. Yep. So again, I think that's going to be on the table. But then to Shannon's point, then everything changes lot. in the yeah. offseason because everybody can leave. Yep. And they need those role players, the shooters and Capella. As Somebody much as, give Capella 25 as, much as I respect what Houston is doing so far, both James and Chris have Chris Paul have histories in the postseason of coming up small. So when are you going to trust them when it really comes push to shove? Because James Harden in that game six against San Antonio last year, I'm still looking for him. I don't know what happened to him. And Chris has had moment after moment with the Clippers where it just – I don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. So could would LeBron say in his heart of hearts, I want to go there? He's had some shaky moments in his career. Are you going to put those three together and magic's going to happen? I don't know. Maybe. And the, the only way that I see LeBron maxing his shot at winning a ring, and you're just going to laugh out loud at this, would be to take no money and go to Golden State. I mean, is that – well, seriously. He, with, with, after they win another championship? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, if you want to go max <laughs> Oh, yeah, if you just want to get rich. chances. But, but, you, that your, wouldn't even but that's just Adam, collecting Adam, rings. Adam, Adam Silver wouldn't even let that happen. You know? No, <laughs> he, he wouldn't. But – it would that would be a horrible look, mm -hmm. don't you? Okay. I mean, that it would, would be, be a horrible, horrible look. But I'm no, saying you, if we're trying you, to feel, if, you're, be a if you're talking about joining no, forces, true. that's okay. the ultimate join. KD forces, look good right? to me with those rings on. Yeah, but they no. It, it, KD already ruined the balance of com competition in the league. Mm -hmm. This would just do it even more. And, so it it wouldn't be because they don't like KD went and carried the team. He fit perfectly into that line. They, they would. Nah, I so hope he ain't <laughs> even considering They play that. like they played so, last night, Skip. Ain't nobody beating Golden State. You saw what they did last night? It, it was a tour de force. <laughs> I agree. But the Spurs have a chance if they can figure out Kawhi. And to your point, there is one man that LeBron James believes in ab above any man. It's that coach yeah. in San Antonio. Yeah. That, they have real love for each other. Yes. And LeBron respects him and trusts him. And, yeah. and for LeBron to trust a coach, you know, that's – yeah. I don't think he trusts anybody the way he trusts that coach because they've obviously been together. Didn't Pop the 2020 coach at the Olympics? Yeah, I, Pop yeah, I so. believe so. So the point is, Kawhi Leonard, I don't know what has happened. All I know from my sources is that the Spurs doctors and independent surgeon, independent physical therapist who are at the top of their professions can't find anything wrong with it, with his quad. But he continues to complain. He'll play a game and wake up the next morning. He's got quad pain, and nobody can figure it out. He doesn't trust anyone because of his issues from his childhood, so he's fallen out of trust with the organization. The one organization in sports that goes overboard to protect players from injury, right? Yep. To, to give them all that they need to rehab, all the time off they need. So the Spurs finally threw up their hands and said, okay, we can't figure this out. 
And if you don't believe us, then you go do it on your own. We'll give you as much time as you need to a point. I mean, I don't know how long he's making $19 million. At some point, you're going to say, well, we're paying him $19 million to do what? Yeah. So has it fallen completely apart? I don't think so. Not yet. But no. is it teetering? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, teetering. Yeah, no question. Okay, but if if they can refigure it out and w get him back in good graces and vice versa, which is not, it's going to be a big issue, but I still think that team has enough depth and firepower with a healthy Kawhi, and I don't know if it's going to happen this year. They're good enough to challenge Golden State because I saw it happen last year in game one. Well, I definitely think now, I agree with you, Chris, the best place for me would be in San Antonio. Yeah. LeBron, Kawhi, LaMarcus Aldridge. Okay. Yeah. So now, it work. yes. Oh, right. and, and you know, I mean, look at what Pop has done with marginal names. Patty Mills. I mean, Danny Green. They now, would have now, shooting. Now, yeah, Dante Murray's Murray. coming yes, alive, man. Exactly. He's starting to look like yeah. a player. Yeah, if I, he wants to win and it yeah. be competitive, I yeah. mean, like you're, you're right. If he goes to Golden State, he can win four or sure. five more rings. Okay. Yeah, but if he wants to compete for rings, mm -hmm. San That's Antonio's. The they, the they might literally win if LeBron were to go to Golden State. Mm -hmm. They might only lose five games that year. You could be right about they that. They might go 70 75. Yeah. But what fun is that? Yeah, no, okay. It'd be, I don't know. That would be. But you said be with Kevin Durant, when all is said and done, people just say, well, How many rings did you win? Yeah. Oh, you won four no, rings. No, I don't know. No. I think that would hurt his legacy okay. if he went to Golden State. Yeah. You would obviously be destroying him, and, and, and rightly so. I don't know, but, but if he go to San Antonio, man. I... What? what? You... Can't. Why not? Why? This is my team. Yep. No mercy. Our next guest is one of the greatest defensive backs of all time. He was an 11-time Pro Bowler, won a Super Bowl with the Ravens, and was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2009. Rod Woodson, welcome to Undisputed. Thanks for having me. And by the way, everywhere this guy went, every team he played for, good things yeah. happened. Like, you know, what, I appreciate that. That's true. I appreciate I, I've that. I've said that many times. But he had to, he had to get, bring it home see, or see, the bottom. No, see, <laughs> he's going he's gonna to bring up the Baltimore. He had to get there before we had to win the Super yeah, you Bowl. Know. But you got to a Super Bowl in Pittsburgh, right. and you, then you won one, then you got to one with the, the Raiders. Yeah, you know? I did. I appreciate it, guys. Way to go. Had best hands for a defensive player that I ever played with. Greatness. I mean, he really could have yep. played. He could have played mm -hmm. another position. Yeah. He had hands like that. Yeah. I tried to, gracious. and he told me no. No, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why they put your defensive back. Because running 4-2, you're supposed to be on the offensive side of the football. <laughs> Well, Rod, let's talk about another future Hall of Famer, Tom Brady. Yesterday, the first episode of his new Facebook documentary, Tom vs. Time, was released. It shows Brady following last year's Super Bowl and leading up to the start of this season. Let's take a listen. Let's see which ones we got here. 2007. Oh, God. It's not a great ending to that year. You know, I'm pulling out a bad ending. I had to pull out a happy ending. 2015, 2014. Oh, right here, 2016. So I still keep this. My suspension letter that I received. Just a nice way to remember. Thank you. When I see myself out there, I feel like, man, I still... I still do this, and I do it better than I've ever done it. So why should I stop? Rod, Brady is 40. Mm. So how much longer do you think he'll play? Well, first of all, let me say, with the way they, they don't practice hard, <laughs> with the way they don't go to training camp that long, mm. the way the quarterback is overly protected in the pocket, out of mm. the pocket, the way, way the way receivers can't get hit if they're defenseless, he can play. I think the way Tom Brady wants to play, I say two more years. The way he wants to play. Two more years because he's playing at a level that I think he transcends generations. There's good players who have great games, and then there's great players. And he's the great player. He, we all know he's going to be donning a, a bronze busk in the, in the Hall of Fame in Canton when right. he retires. Right. The guy is a, a, a tremendous player. But one of the things I kind of I, – I, I'm listening to him speak. Like, why did he make that take? Was he talking to himself? Was he talking to – his fans, was he talking to the young kids? Was he talking to the New England Patriots saying, keep me around? That's what threw me off because people who have his stature, who, who's done and accomplished what he's accomplished, don't need to put a tape out like that to say, I need to do that. That's the only thing that kind of made me hesitate to the like, why are you putting that out? So what do you think? What, what's your gut on it? My gut is that he's trying to convince himself he can keep playing at a highest okay. level. That's Maybe. my gut. Maybe. And I think with that being said, 
you know, you know, we played him this past year, mm -hmm. and I was when I was with the Raiders coaching. And when he gets going, you can't stop him. You gotta, you gotta put some people. You gotta put pressure on him up front in the middle. And if you can do that, you can have some. Uh, you got opportunity to win. But that guy is one of the best quarterbacks to ever play in the National mm. Football League. What was your plan going into that game? Man, please, Tom, get sick. <laughs> <laughs> we played in Mexico City, so I was like, get the flu bug. Yeah, get yeah. yeah get Mama Zuma's revenge. Get yeah. something. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's, it's hard to beat him. It really is. You know, uh, you know, he's watching last week when he played against Jacksonville, and he was in the third quarter. I think it was mid-third quarter. I was like, this next drive is critical for mm -hmm. the Jacksonville Jaguars. And he went right down the field and scored a touchdown. I'm like, they're going to win the game mm. because the guy just, once he gets moving and once he figures out the defense and what works, that's when he's at his best. How strong is his arm at this stage of his life? Well, it's not a young Tom Brady, but he still can zoom the ball. He still can throw the ball. He, he still finds his guys. And the, the biggest thing is he has a great rapport with his receivers, especially the inside guy. Yep. That's where he's making his money. Yep. You know, everybody's talking about these big, tall receivers. Their best players are these two little short guys that be just get in and out of breaks mm -hmm. and cause so many havocs for defenses. And then he is so good at finding the small windows. Mm -hmm. Danny Amendola, undrafted out of Texas Tech because yeah. he went to the combine and ran 4-7. And now he's become Brady's sort of go-to guy, yeah. right? I mean, he was the he guy is. who beat Jacksonville. Yeah, absolutely. And what did you guys think going into the game? We got to do what to Danny Amendola? I mean, Danny, I mean, we're on a doubling, but... We want to have ish situations where we know that they, because there's, they do certain things. They're formationally sound. So certain formations are going to run certain routes. But with that being said, even though you knew it was coming, he still found a way because they have such great rapport. Yep. Have, it's a great feel like if you're overplaying on, a, on your own basketball court and you're right. overplaying a guy, he just backs door you. Mm -hmm. Well, he has a feel for that. He has a feel. If you're overplaying, you I just stop him, way. just pivot out. And they, they just do that at the best, at the highest level with anybody in the National Football Rod, League. you played late and you played 17 years. You went, you led the league in pick uh, year 16. What was some of the keys to your success? And is this what Tom Brady's doing? Because obviously they didn't, we didn't have all the technology that they have now. Well, I think the biggest thing for me back then was learning your body. Right. Learning who you are. Listening to your body. Right. I, I think a lot of guys who get older, they don't listen to their body and they're trying to do that same type of workout when they were 22, 23. I was that guy. And you, you just <laughs> can't do it. And I think the more you're around the game, you gotta be more cerebral. Mm -hmm. So the game is really played two to one mental to physical. Everybody's, everybody's talented coming in this league. Tom Brady was a six round pick. Right. Nobody knew that was gonna be TB12. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't really know what that, <laughs> I don't know where he's going with that, but soon it's gonna be the sign. Right. Who are you? I'm just a sign. <laughs> but you know, when, when you think about it, you know, you got to be more cerebral as you get older. Right. You know, just like Ray Lewis. You know, Ray, when Ray got older, he was a faster player, just like when he was younger, but because he, he anticipated the plays more. faster. Right. Because he understood the offense and what they were trying to accomplish against right. him. And that was the same thing with me when I got a little bit older. Mm. So to me, the reason he's putting this out now is he's become like a fitness zealot. He's become evangelical about his program mm -hmm. that he has figured out with the help of, is it Alex Guerrero? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You ain't gonna say doctor, huh? <laughs> I don't think he qualifies. But they have figured out things that Tom Brady fully invests in and believes right. in that he thinks will prolong his football life into middle 40s, that he thinks he can play until he's 45. I don't bet against this guy. You guys know the game from a different perspective mm -hmm. because it is a, as you well know, a violent game. Yeah. And by the way, he got rocked a couple of times. Miles Jack mm -hmm. came on a blitz up the middle and nobody mm -hmm. touched him and he hit Brady head on. I mean, he, he yeah. got him good. Yeah. But Brady has figured out this without going into the gory detail. Pliability, where you lengthen instead of strengthen. Mm -hmm. You know, he says, I don't even have any biceps anymore. Right. I'm long because then I can absorb the blow everything. better. I don't tighten. And, well, you, and, if you watched him in the video, Skip, yeah. everything he does is with bands. Yeah. Right. He bands. has, he has no, no dumbbells, yeah. no barbells. Mm -hmm. Everything is, is band related. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, as he said at the end of this first installment, the debut episode, he's saying, in effect, I've played so many games, as you, you two had played so many games, and all of a sudden, you, the mental far outweighs the physical, and he's saying, I've, I've got so many game plans in my head, he still, he doesn't like watching tape, he's addicted to watching tape, four and five hour sessions, and 
His point is, the more information you give me, the better I'm going to be on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And a lot of quarterbacks would go the other, dumb it down a little bit, yeah. you know, streamline it, simplify it so I can remember under pressure that I got to do this and this instead of all those things. But he's processing so quickly, given your points, you know, option routes, rapport, that, that he's saying, I'm playing at the highest level I've ever played at. That's what he said right. last night in this. Yeah. Why should I stop now? So what's going to make him stop in two years? I don't know because I don't see any any fire going out. Right. I don't see waning passion for, for the process of this, which it's not easy, as you know. It's, it's a lot of work. Well, Skip, when you look at Tom and he says the, uh, the more information you give him, the, more, you know, the better it is for him. John was like that, but for me, I didn't like to chase ghosts. If I didn't see it on tape... Well, what if they play, you know, John was a guy, well, what if they play this coverage? Mm -hmm. Well, we haven't seen it on tape, but what yep. if they do? I was like, well, if they hadn't shown it, why do we need to prepare for it? You know, let's go by what we see. But John was a stickler, uh, stickler for knowledge like that. He wanted to know just in case that the, the helicopter play, mm -hmm. we had a play call and all 100%. The 30 reps we took off, the, the Packers were in this defense. Mm -hmm. And John asked Mike in practice, said, well, Mike, what if they played this coverage? Mike said, they're not going to play it. He said, well, what if they do? He said, well, you're going to have to go make a play. We get in the game, Skip, what do they do? Mm -hmm. They play the one coverage that they had never shown, and John says, what if they do it? Mike says, you got to go make a play. So he he wouldn't make a play. Okay. So you two Hall of Famers are trying to project your perspective that you learned on him, and you're saying two more years. And I'm obviously not in the Hall of Fame, and I'm sitting back saying somewhat objectively, if I can, wait a second, maybe he's figured out things that even you guys couldn't figure out. Oh. Maybe he's beating the system in a way and at a, at a position that he can continue to thrive. That's the key, yeah. the position right, he's playing. Sure. He's not getting hit. Most quarterbacks don't have a lot of muscle mass anyway. You don't right. want that to have, you don't want them to have that. Right. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's really about does he get any major injuries? He's only yeah. had that one yeah. year. Yeah, yeah, but I can remember. remember oh, I agree. Yeah. 2008. When Matt Castle came in. Right. Mm -hmm. Other than that, he hasn't been injured. No. Nope. And, you know, if he doesn't have any major injuries, but my key is Tom Brady, it's Tom Brady right now, and then Aaron Rodgers, and then everybody else. And there's a gap between Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers, and Aaron Rodgers is really good. Yeah. So as long as he doesn't have any major injuries. Yep. I'm just saying the two years, because after, after two years, you don't know what's going to happen with the body. He's going to be 42. He's still going to be playing. He's going to be taking those shots. How many more shots like that can he still take and get up and not be injured? Because remember, Warren went to the Pro Bowl skip at 41. Mm -hmm. He played. He started 10 games. He, he was did. in Seattle. He went that's to the right. Pro Bowl, so was, Warren ended up playing until he was 44. Well, that, that, that's a good point. Now, granted, uh, uh, the last the last couple of years, he skipped. He was, you know, he was a backup. He started one, time, one game in his last two years. But... Like I said, it's just that one, he's never had the ankle, you know, little nagging stuff, but the one hit, all it takes is one. Yeah. That's well, it. plus, I mean, nobody can imagine Tom Brady as a backup, so. No. Just oh. think about Peyton. Peyton <laughs> took that one hit, Skip, on a quarterback sneak in Washington, mm -hmm. and it changed his yep. fate forever. He played, but he was not the same. No mercy. Dak Prescott and the Cowboys missed the playoffs this season after being the number one seed in the NFC in 2016. Dak's stats were down across the board, including throwing nine more interceptions than he did in his rookie year. Yesterday, Jerry Jones said the offense will be more Dak friendly. Let's take a listen. I just think we need to take advantage of uh, what we have in Dak. And uh, I think we can, uh, a part of that will be uh, uh, expanding the playbook and expanding. Uh, uh, not to be trite, but uh, really uh, giving, uh, becoming more problematic for defenses. Do you need another weapon? And on? coming in uh, before the game, change it up. I think that's what this offseason's about. I think that's what the position coach changes are about, is to change it up, and then as a part of changing it up, changing it up uh, more during the season, from the beginning of the season to the middle of the season to the end of the season. I think you're going to see a lot more uh, 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 variation mm -hmm. in what we're doing. Variation in terms of just just variation in terms of schemes, in terms of, uh, uh, of techniques. We're joined by FS1 NFL analyst Eric mm. Dickerson. Welcome, Eric. Mm. <laughs> well, closet doing? cowboy fan, Eric. Dickerson. Oh, please! You know you love the Cowboys. <laughs> Eric, what does this mean for the Cowboys' offense? Well, um, well, when he says you know make it more Dak friendly. 
I can tell when he's talking, he's not dumbing it down for sure, for not for a quarterback. When I look at Dak's stats from last year, uh, he had fewer touchdowns by one, 22 compared to 23. The big one is games won. You know, they won 13, they won nine this past season. Uh, interceptions, you know, for sure, four of the first year, 13 this year. And uh, what Skip always likes this, the passer rating, 86.6 this year, 104.9. I actually it's, like QBR better than okay, that, but go ahead. Right. You, in, that, in that same area. Yeah, okay. You know, uh, 104.9. You know, I, I think the big thing is here is that Dak is a, an elite quarterback. I think he's still one of the top quarterbacks in the NFL. I think it really comes down to coaching. I, that's, that's, that's my main thing is coaching. I look at what Sean McVay did with Jared Goff, Good a point. guy that they thought was truly a bust. Mm -hmm. You know, people were saying he was yeah. a bust. You can even look at, look at what Doug Peterson did with Carson Wentz, you know, even what he's, he's doing right now. Um, I feel like that it's a, it's, it's a coaching change. You, you have to be, be coaching. I'll say this much here. We'll even do this for you, Skip. Mm -hmm. We'll take our play, the, the Rams playbook and we'll just slap a cowboy logo on it. Uh -oh. that's, that, 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 I think that, that, that's what y'all need. Will you I mean, slap a Sammy Watkins on there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you really out on Sammy Watkins. <laughs> you really out on dance, um, huh? Well, I need somebody who can no. get open. Joe, Joe you remember well, the first year? Every year I come over here, he's somebody. He's, throw up the X, Joy. Throw up the X. But, 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 but if you want to. he was doing this this year. Mm. If, if, it's one, if it's one down thing I would have to say about, about Dak is, is that I think he has to learn what, what I know the great Tom Brady has done, uh, Aaron Rodgers has done. I think the – and that's throwing your receivers open, you know, mm. learn how to throw them open. And that means, you know, you have to have a continuity with your receivers. And I think that's what's missing with, with, mm. with Dak and his receivers. Other than that, I just feel like it's really a coaching problem because – the coaches are supposed to make your young quarterback that much better. Mm -hmm. I mean, in his, in his second year. I mean, Dak was exceptional in his first year. And as at football, and you know, Shannon, is that we watch film. They start watching film. They like they start watching your tendencies, what you like to do, uh, what gives you problems. Does cover two giving problems? Does cover four giving problems? Does a hand in his face giving problems? Does blitzes giving problems? Mm -hmm. So, and, and this year, the Cowboys had to throw the football a lot more. I mean, they really did. I mean, because they didn't know if they're going to have that. I mean, if they're going to have mm -hmm. Zeke or not, if he's going to be in or out. So, and, and keeping Zeke in on third downs, like, like the Rams did this year, is important. It really is because Zeke is a good blocker. Yeah. And I think getting him into the mix more so. You know, I don't think you can put it all on, on Dak. I think you really have to look at Jason. And I like Jason Garrett. I, th I, th I know you know Jerry Jones loves him. But I think, I think it's something to do with coaching. Mm. I do not. I think they need to take advantage of Zeke because that's why they had the success. That's the – you mentioned you mentioned Jerry Goff. What did Todd Gurley do this year? What didn't Todd Gurley do the year before? No offensive mm. line. That's my thing. Skip, we can dress this up all you want to. And I'm not saying that in, in, a, in a given time, Dak won't be elite or even great, but he's a long way from that. Tom Brady was not great his first year. He wasn't great his second year. Yeah. Tom Brady wasn't great when he won the first Super Bowl. They were a running team. If you look at Dak numbers, they uh, uh, he come, they came down because Zeke missed six weeks. Mm -hmm. You had to – now, granted, he had an historically great rookie season. The offensive line – played like they did in 2014. But when you remove Zeke, that's the game changer, Skip. You can dress out. You can tell me you want Dak. I mean, QBR dropped from 79 to 66. Wait, a, wait, third in the league two years ago. This year he dropped all the way to fourth boy. in the league. Awful. You gave him a, an F for <laughs> dropping from third to fourth <laughs> in the whole NFL. Oh, you know that game? Uh, hey. An F? Yeah. But That's it, just silly. But, but, That's he, what but, that but, is. He ordered, but he came to my restaurant and ordered four more plates of L's. Mm. <laughs> That's what he did order. Yeah, but 13 why to 9. I wore those L's. Yeah, because why Zeke. Oh, Zeke. 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 Do you want to make it more friendly? Give Zeke the football. Play action off of that because that's what you were able to do as rookie year. Look at Tony Romo's best season. DeMarco Murray in 2014. Football. Play action. Mm -hmm. Dez had a big monster day, Skip Bayless. Look, you could all this you want to talk about this. There's a maturation process that must take place between every quarterback. John Elway was great, but we became a very different team once we got that 30 back mm -hmm. there. Mm. He was our best player. Let her ride him home. Mm. Your best player is 2-1. Now, you can talk about the quarterback's the most important. He touches the ball every time. That I get all the that. Truth. But he ain't the best player. 2-1 mm. is their mm. best player. Mm. Don't you forget it. 
The running back is making a comeback. <laughs> when they won 11 straight games a year ago, Dak Prescott was the best player on the team. And there were times last year when he was the best player on the team. And before I get into the whys of last year, I want to get back to what we just saw Jerry Jones say. It's baffling to me because he's saying we need more imagination. Nation. We need more variation. But you keep the head coach in OC. You kept the head coach. <laughs> and you, 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 all you did was change the quarterback coach, Wade Wilson, out. And, and the receiver coach. And Derek you, Dooley. You, okay, you could do that. But uh, little Kellen Moore, remember the backup quarterback? Yeah. He got elevated to quarterback coach. So he's retired now. And he grew up as the son of a former high school coach, great program in the state of Washington. So he's a smart young man. Yeah. Is he going to start calling plays now? I don't know, because if you really want to shake it up, you fire Scott Linehan. Was it his fault last year that they were just too predictable? I, I don't know. So let's look at what Dak had around him. The offensive line underachieved all year. You can't tell me that was the best offensive line no, in football because no. it's pass blockers. And remember, Ty Smith missed three big games. And when, when he was out, they had nobody over there. That, they could have had me over there. Seriously, yeah. I could have done what Chaz Green did at Atlanta, <laughs> which is give up six sacks. I could have given up six. <laughs> well, am I right? 16, maybe. But. Yeah, maybe 16. But, but, but they gave up eight total that day. Yeah. And every time Dak sat on that back foot, boom, he got hit in the back, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, because right? he couldn't run. Ain't got Zeke. Couldn't run. But you have to make you have to make adjustments. Go ahead. So we start there, and now let's look at the receivers. Show me one receiver other than Bryce Butler, who didn't get to play very much, who could separate from whoever was covering. Show me one, because the Hall of Fame receiver across from me said all year long, Des Bryant is a disaster. Am I right? Yeah. He is a broken down shadow of what he used to be. Correct. And so I look at the numbers from 2014. Again, Tony Romo, they had the wavelength. They had the connection. They did have DeMarco leading the league in rushing. I give you that. Yes. But Romo's throwing jump balls to Des Bryant. The targets were almost the same in 2014 as they were this past season. It's 132 to 137. So it's five fewer targets. Yeah. But he in, in 2014, he caught 64% of them. That'll work. Yeah. Last year, he caught 52% of them for 482 fewer yards on the same targets yeah. than he had in 2014. 16 touchdowns in 2014, six touchdowns last year. So you keep going to 88, 88, because the, the read tells you 88 single covered. Mm -hmm. And, and sometimes it's not even the best corner. It's just whoever's over there yeah. who happens to come Whatever up. He's, where he comes yeah. out at. Okay? And, and so Dak's thinking, i got to throw it to 88. And there's a lot of pressure exerted by 88 in the huddle and in the locker room. Throw it to 88, throw it to 88. And he's throwing up the X when the ball gets there. Yep. And it's hitting him right in the X, right? <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> and, and then look at little Cole Beasley. Two years ago, he caught 75 balls. That's, that's like Wes Welker-esque. Yeah. You know, that's Edelman Amendola-esque. Last year, he caught 36. That's, that's more than half the production so drop-off. So he's living up to his name, okay. Beasley Beasley. Beasley Beasley. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure what my eye test told me is that every defense said, just double him, bracket him. Again, sometimes it's just with the linebacker. Right. And Dak would say, oh, he's doubled. i got to throw it to 88. Yeah. Well, there are ways with option routes. I mean, how many times was a Julian Edelman double covered? Or yeah. Wes Welker. I, I would tell you 80% of the time they're yeah. double cut, especially on a key third down. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. And yet, he, they got rapport, option route. You know, I, I'm going to trust you. You're going to go here. You're going to go there. And I'm going to throw you open because we're going to anticipate where you're going to beat those two guys. Correct. Right? Okay? So you lose that. So you don't have anybody except Jason Witten, who's going to be on our show from the Super Bowl. Greatest tight end ever. But he's in his waning years. So <laughs> is he going to hurt anybody after catch? He can get open and screen you, you know. He, yeah. can, he can catch he, four he, yards. He can get you a couple first down. He can not, not run this man right here. No, he needs to. Okay. So, you, you, first of all, what you need to change for Dak is you need to get him a little help, just somebody who can yeah. catch it. Oh, okay. And I, I think I, receiver will be a priority in yes, the draft. Yes. Okay. But, again, the two key games, the turning point games, were the first one against your team at Jerry World. And the second one the next week at home against Aaron Rodgers. These are the turning point of the year. And guess who was still there? Ezekiel Elliott was there. Go look at his numbers. Not great those days. 
Dak Prescott was sensational in both games. He threw one interception against you guys in the second half when it started to teeter, and so it hurt his QBR a little bit, but it was still 78. Against Aaron Rodgers, he was 97 QBR on scale of 0 to 100. So once again, he outplayed Aaron Rodgers. And what happened? They led 24 to 16 on you guys at halftime. And you're, you're a little queasy at halftime, right? I wasn't even worried. Yes, you were. You were a little queasy. <laughs> anyway. And they led Aaron Rodgers 21 to 12 at halftime. So he scored 24 and 21. That, that'll work. Yeah. And you know what happened in the second half? No, Sean Lee. <laughs> The defense <laughs> fell right on its face in its home dome. If you don't mind me asking. They got blown off the field in the second half. If you don't half. mind me asking, they scored 24 points in the first quarter. I mean, the first half against the Rams. Mm -hmm. Why couldn't they score 24 in the second quarter? Because they didn't have the ball very much. But they did. Well, so the Rams did. So but when the Rams scored, they kicked the ball a lot to the Cowboys. So, so the, the way it works in football is you, your defense has to take the ball back. You know, so because no, Belichick's can... defense, as you pointed out to me, in the fourth quarter against Jacksonville, yeah. they took it back. They took it. They forced punt, punt, and punt. Right? right? Yeah. Okay, these guys force nothing but touchdowns for the other team. That's right. what they force. But even so, Skip, you still get an opportunity. So even if they score a touchdown, they kick it off to you, you can go back and match them. You can he score. didn't. I mean, they gave up. I mean, they had I, 21. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what. So if they scored 24 in the first half against the Rams, what did they score? Where, where the was half? Zeke in the second half? Help me out. I'm where was where, your best player? Where was that? Where was he? Where was that, where was that huh. guy to put 24? Where was he, Shannon? He was playing, but are you right. I don't know. We had, we had the ball. The Rams had the ball more in the second half. They did. I, I'll still say it comes down to you know, most definitely. I think I kept telling Zeke wasn't there. You wouldn't know if you're going to have him or you're not going to have him. That, that, and, and, and that's a distraction. Me, the cloud hung over this team that from is, game right. to well, game to Well, game. Maybe, maybe Jerry is saying, I don't know going forward if I can count on Zeke to be there. Maybe. Maybe that's why we need to make it more Dak friendly mm -hmm. because if we make it keep it Zeke friendly, that's what possible. happens if Zeke is not here? You got Let's me kill. there. Look at, look at uh, Russell Wilson mm -hmm. in the Super Bowl year and look at Russell Wilson now. Marshawn Lynch was second in the rushing when they won the Super Bowl. Russell was 22nd in passing. Now it's flipped. Mm -hmm. They didn't make the playoffs. Yeah. Now, Russell, it took Russell a while to mature to become what he is, Skip. You know, you just can't throw the guy, oh, oh yeah, he had a great rookie, so that's what he's going to be moving forward. Well, no, but, but he but, didn't have a terrible year. Yeah, he did. But, when, but the Cowboys, the, the, with Zach's first year, the Cowboys were in control of most of those games. So they weren't mm -hmm. playing from behind. They played from behind a lot this year. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's the difference. That's I mean, true. When you can play from the front, I, don't, you, I can run the football. Oh, I yeah. Can, I play action. I can hand the ball off to Zeke. I can run Front screen. runner, what you but call you it, Skip? from behind, mm -hmm. yeah, you, you say so about the ball, front runner. Although I do remember that game at Pittsburgh two years ago, 42 seconds left, and it looked like it was over, and Dak Prescott said, Hmm, I that, got this. That's Stevie Wonder song. <laughs> I wish those days. Uh, so since wood. Jason Witten's going to be here next week, are we going to set up this race? Man, I'm going to blow the doors off, Jason. Can I, no, can I please race you? Uh, all right. three of you can if race. If you don't sit your old 59-year-old... I don't kid. care if I'm 61, I still outrun you. He wants to race you. you. Why are you being scary? Tell? He's scared. E.D. E cannot... He don't want none of this. He, he, he wants to do it. Why are you being scary? Right. This, this man ran like 4-3. Yeah, 40 years and, ago. And what did you run with your best time? Four, I didn't eight, run 4-3. Four, four, what eight. did you run your best time? I ran fast as I wanted. What, no, what's your best time? <laughs> I thought Daryl Green run you down. I can't can not run Daryl Green. <laughs> Why don't we just do it? So Daryl Green would have ran past you and came back. No, I'm going to set it up. We'll do it for charity. Will you do it? Yep. Oh, please. Oh, please. Can, will yep. you? Uh, look at me. Look, me right, look at me. You will do it? Yeah. You? I'm going to blow the nose off. He's known to Welch, so we have it. I got to start training you little hamster. Ah, uh, there we go. <laughs> no mercy. WWE Chairman Vince McMahon made a big announcement yesterday that he is bringing back the XFL. McMahon helped found the league in 2001, but it only lasted one season. It will return in 2020 and have eight teams. Let's take a listen to him yesterday. The new XFL will be fan-centric with all the things you like to see and less of the things you don't. And no doubt, a lot of innovation is along the way. We will present a shorter, faster-paced, family-friendly, and easier-to-understand game. Don't get me wrong, it's still football, but it's professional football reimagined. Will any invites be extended to players like Johnny Manziel, Tim Tebow, Colin Kaepernick? Well, I think this, um, that one of the things when I said the quality of human being is very important and just as important as the quality of the player, what I mean by that is um, you want someone who, who does not have any criminality whatsoever associated with them. And in the uh, XFL, even if you have a DUI, you will not play in the XFL. So that would probably eliminate some of them, uh, not all of them. If Tim Tebow wants to play, he, he could very well play. 
Shannon, will this work? Mm. I don't believe so because the thing is, what, Skip, if you go back and you look at the strikes, the NFL, those were scab players, but they had NFL logo on the side of their helmet. Yep. So people still believe that those were professionals. And that was the, that's the thing. Uh, the World League, some of those guys played in the NFL, Skip. Some of those guys that played in, sure. and they, they, they sent them down to Europe to yeah. get more, more, you know, more reps than what they got in the regular season. But they wouldn't watch it because it's like, those are not pros. Mm -hmm. That's not the Patriots. That's not the Cowboys. That's not the Steelers. What he's trying to do, he's pandering to, he's trying to find this demo that's out on the NFL because of the anthem protest. Because you remember he said, standing for the anthem is a time-honored tradition. Mm -hmm. So they will stand. He's trying to find that demo. Or out on the criminal behavior. Right. Yeah. So he's mm -hmm. trying to find that group. Mm -hmm. I think he might... He's going to come to the realization it's smaller than he w might think. Um, but he's trying to find that group, pander to them, cater to them, mm -hmm. but to say, well, no criminality. So are you saying that no one that works in WWE <laughs> has ever, ever had a DUI, had any criminality? Is that what you're telling us, Vince McMahon? Because people are going to go digging the ball over. Now, he said he can't play in that league. Now, if you hire people at your business that has criminality, mm -hmm. how hypocritical is that, Skip? That's hypocrisy at its highest. You can't say, well, I won't have no, you can't play in my league, but you can work in my business. Mm -hmm. You can work in this business with criminal, criminal background, but not in this business. But that's, mm -hmm. again, he's trying to, what it, the XFL was too gimmicky. Although, you know, some of the, you know, they like the celebration and the NFL has lacked some of the celebration. And I think the fans like that. Guys come up with, you know, the, the potato sack race, Skip, mm -hmm. and they had to freeze and hide and seek and all that. And I think the fans got into it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, they want football in its purest. They want to see the best of the best. Now, will he get some guys? Because there are going to be situations that guys that don't make it to the NFL, they still want to play football. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it, they're paying money, Skip. Yep. Going to be able to pay some bills. Why not? But I just don't think that when you're saying the NFL, because even when guys in basketball, Skip, they go overseas, or professional, they don't view Turkey as professional basketball. They don't view Israel as... Did you play in the NBA? No, I played overseas. Okay. Okay. You played overseas. That's not the NBA. And if you don't play NFL, mm -hmm. I don't believe I don't believe the fans view it the same and it's going to be hard for them to to catch up. Mm -hmm. Even the USFL had a shelf life skill because they didn't view those guys as equal, even though some of those guys came and were a heck of a players. Oh, now they signed <laughs> some big names. Yeah. Herschel Walker. Yeah. By Donald Trump. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Jim Kelly. Steve Young. Yep. Yep. So they had some star stars, mm -hmm. right? Just not a day. It's like, right. yeah, you got one. Yeah. But the NFL got 53. Well, that's the problem. <laughs> so, Vince McMahon is one of those guys I don't bet against because he has genius about him, and he's shown you that before. Mm -hmm. And I do admire the fact that this time he says, no investors, this is my money and my way. And to me... The old XFL, I went to a couple of games at Soldier Field, and mm -hmm. I, I must admit, I did enjoy them. They were fun. Now, would I have kept going? I don't, I don't know. Yeah. But it stuck with me. It's hard to say because it was a little gimmicky. Mm -hmm. But it was presented as WWE in helmet and shoulder pads, right? It was outlaw right. image. It was he hate me, Rod Smart. Way to go. Great name. It was a great name. <laughs> and, and now he wants... They love us. Right. You know, that's, that's what he wants right. now. So he's going to flip the script completely. And there was one quote. He said, the start of this league has nothing to do with the NFL's troubles. But then he went on to say, I'm not going to knock those guys, but I am going to learn from their mistakes, as anyone would if they were tasked with reimagining a new football league. Well, clearly, he's just saying, hmm, protests could have hurt him a little bit. Criminality could hurt a little bit you know, criminal records. Yeah. So I'm going to try. I'm going to go for that opening, right? Yeah. And just for the record, as we know, <laughs> President Trump did criticize the players repeatedly yeah. for protesting. And, and Vince McMahon, wife, wife is a cabinet is, member of, Dr. And pre of President Trump. Heads the Small Business Administration mm -hmm. in Trump's cabinet, just for the record. So... Here he goes, and he's going to take two years. They, they tried to throw the old XFL together mm -hmm. back in the, what was it? 
2000-ish or so. Yeah. Yeah. They tried to throw it together in one year, and he learned a lesson. It just takes longer than that to actually put a lead together with mm -hmm. good players right. and well-run organizations. So he wants eight cities. I, I do like his idea of shorten the games. That's the, I don't know if you can get a football game in two hours, but you could probably figure Would it out. Would you have a running clock? I don't know. Right. That, that's probably the only way, Skip. Okay. And the thing is, you know, you remember the NFL was talking about bringing some resemblance of the World League back mm -hmm. so it can train the players and get the players more because you don't have as much time on the field. So, it, yep. watch. Mm -hmm. I bet you the NFL come back with the World League or some resemblance maybe, of it. Maybe. Yep, you could be right. So, I admire him for the endeavor here, the trying, but in the end... You have to have players to sell the product. Yes. You have to have names. I, I don't follow WWE closely, yeah. but 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 you, you have superstars. Mm -hmm. You have you you have heroes and villains yeah. and they sell because they're magnetic, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, you get they're I mean every once rocks. in a while they'll get John Cena to come back or they'll get the yeah. rock to come back right? and they'll get some of these yeah. guys yeah, and for WrestleMania, but at the skip. The NFL is, is about teams, about being professional. And people want to see mm -hmm. the professional athlete at yep. its highest. And it's like, well, if the guy is that good, why is he in the XFL? Why is he in the NFL? Mm -hmm. It's just like basketball. Well, if you're as good as you say, mm -hmm. why are you overseas playing and not in the NBA? Mm -hmm. People want to see, you know, yeah, I was, you know, I'm a doctor. Okay, then why aren't you? Well, well, you, you, you know. No, they don't know. They want to see professionals. And... The teams, it's not like, college, you know, college, hey, you know, the NF, and especially NBA, they're really star-driven league. Mm -hmm. I mean, they'll follow their star. Yeah, they love LeBron, but they followed him when he went to, to Miami, they, and he went mm -hmm. back. It, I hope, hey, I wish him well. I don't want to see anybody fail. You're going to take that leap of faith and, and try to get it, but I, it's hard for me to believe without many, many stars, mm -hmm. a league succeeding. Okay. And, and, what, you, and where are you going to put it? Where are you going to put these Eight cities. He's going to pick eight cities. I don't know. Good, good question. But the rules are going to be Vince's rules. If, you, if he's signing your paycheck, you cannot use his stage to express right. your opinions mm -hmm. about things outside of football. Right. Right? Well, but they're, they're not going to have, they're not going to have a, a, a players association. Mm -hmm. So you don't, have any, you don't have really any bargaining power because it's basically you sign here. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not launching until 2020, so they have a little mm -hmm. time to figure all these things out. Yep. But Sports is the last remaining true live television product. I mean, look, we have the big three on, uh, oh, on, on our network, so it's not unheard of that, you know, new leagues would And, and he wants launch. to, I think, stream this, you know, on What, what I don't Amazon. understand about it, though, yep. is, uh, is, is the XFL, what, what was appealing about it was the edge. gimmick in nature, yeah. the edge yeah. of it, the, the rebel nature yeah, of it, and he's rebel. pitching it as a more professional NFL. Yeah, that's what he is. No, nope. I, I don't know. And, Skip, you know, it, it, there is no kickoff. You put the ball in the middle of the field and guys run and try to grab the ball. Well, the sure, guy uh, separated the shoulder. <laughs> I'm sure oh. they'll change some of the rules to it, but, but if I'm going to go to the XFL, I, I want to see... Give me. I want to see the XFL. I don't want to see the NFL. We already have the NFL. Yeah. That's, that's but is there a segment of fandom NFL fans who are out on protests and is certainly out on criminality? You know, like, well, that's, that's, seems that's, like that's every the other day we're to talking about to. somebody got in trouble with one of the NFL teams. So, yeah, he's trying to reach the for WWE that WWE has cleaned up its image a lot when it comes you know? to that as well because, yeah. you know, they have a lot of kids that right. watch. So, I mean, if you look at old clips of stuff that went on with oh. WWE, right. you know, 10, 15 years ago, it's not the same as yes, it is now. But it's just it feels like a watered-down version of the XFL. Well, look. President Trump tried to crack the NFL. Mm -hmm. Now Vince McNair tried mm -hmm. it one time. He's trying to bring it back, trying, trying to get to it, again. it again. Vince has yeah. the juice. I just I, I wonder about the, the brand. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. We're back at the same time Monday morning, 930 Eastern. Have a great weekend. We'll see you then. Fox Sports. One of one. one.